Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity. Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Hapanwo TV. Live from Lytham St Anne's Lancashire. The site of the Probe Conference of Autumn 2009. And this is my scene from the hotel window. We're at the Ad Astra Hotel in St Anne's. And it's absolutely beautiful as you can see. Beautiful morning. There's a... That's not a chemtrail, no, it's evaporating. And um, there's um beautiful sky. Blew up a real gale last night. But as what happens often when you have like a lot of wind, it clears the atmosphere. Um, so that's a real treat to wake up to this morning, this lovely Sunday morning. It's been a bit of a it's been a bit of a strange conference because uh, a lot of the regulars are not there. Um the orb man. Dennis is not there, nor is his wife Marion because she's ill, and so they're both away. Um, Ellis, Ellis Taylor is in Australia, as um, you'll no doubt know if you've watched his videos on YouTube. Um, Matthew Deleuze is not here either. Um, some of my other friends, like Ben Fairhall, there's, well, he hasn't been for quite a few months now. Um, so there's a lot of faces, you know, Rosie, the, the lady with the music, and that, she's not there either. So there's a lot of sort of like faces people I normally used to see, which I haven't seen. Um, uh, me and Bardo were here, and we had a strange journey, because there was a really irritating man on the train. It's horrible. Oh, we got on the train at Oxford, and um, we ended up sitting next to this bloke. Now, Bardo was doing her translation. She translated one of David Icke's documents for the one of his part of his website, some of the free documents on his website for the, for her friends on the South American um, forum. And this bloke was looking over and he went, "Oh, David Icke website. Oh, he's a nutter." And um, and we we made smart remark, but we were both really pissed off. But then we thought, well, we got off the train at Birmingham. We thought, well, thank God he's gone. Anyway, we get on the train on the train to Preston. And guess who comes and sits next to us? That very same bloke. And not only that, he booked the seat right next to the one where we were sitting. Now, I mean, that, that's a bit of negative serendipity there, isn't it? You know, real, oh, synchronicity you don't want, really. Um, we found an injured pigeon on Friday evening, too, just sitting on the ground. It looked like it lost one of its eyes. Very, very strange. Very, very strange incident. Um, we immediately, we, we didn't know what to do with it. It was just sitting there, it wouldn't move. You know, pigeons usually run fly when you get near them, but this one didn't, it, it just sat there. Um, oh, it was like a really injured bunny. I mean, like, its feathers were all ruffled and it looked like it lost one of its eyes. It just swelling and sort of like crustiness around where its, where its right eye would normally be. Maybe, maybe a cat went for it or something. But we, luckily there was a vetch that was open just up the road, so we managed to drop it off in there. Um, unless we just had to get hold of the RSPCA, and that could have taken ages. Um, well, it's, um, it's been a kind of a quite a remarkable weekend. I mean, when I went to the Now That's Weird conference last year in Glastonbury, it coincided with this very, very interesting UFO sighting the St. Athens helicopter sighting by these policemen. <coughs> you know, police helicopters saw this UFO. Um, this particular weekend is very important in terms of news as well, because um, it's the referendum in Ireland on the um, Lisbon Treaty, which basically is um, something that will bring more and more control of the European Union on the individual nation states of Europe. Um, something which I'm very, very much opposed to. I believe it's completely and utterly destructive in terms of our individual freedom are, and of course our national self-determination. Also, it's a step further to the New World Order because once, once the European, once all the super states are in place, then they'll go, they'll go for a world government. It's obvious that the Illuminati are going for a two-stage world government plan, starting with European super blocks, then going straight for full world government. Um, I mean, I've, I've, Every Irish person I meet, I always ask them about the Lisbon Treaty. There's this woman at work, an Irish woman at work, who's kind of um, and one of the nurses. And I said to her, I said, oh, you know, you, you, I started talking about the Lisbon Treaty. I said, oh, you know, you're going to vote for the Lisbon. What are you going to vote in the Lisbon Treaty next week? And she sort of said, oh, I heard a little bit about that. But it was, um, 
I, I wasn't really watching because I'm too busy working at the moment because I'm going back to university. I was going, oh. She wants to be a paramedic and um, she has to study really hard. She has to work really hard and do every shift she can to earn the money for her training. Um, that is just typical, isn't it? There's a, there's a document called Silent Weapons for a Quiet War, which I've spoken about before and written about on, on the Herpanmo blog, which I'm sure many, most of you are familiar with. One of, one of the lines in that is, um, keep them busy, 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 back on the farm with the other animals. Well, that's typical, isn't it? That's exactly it. They want to keep us as busy as possible, a struggle to survive. You want to do any training, you want to better yourself, um, you, have to, you have to work hard to earn the money to do it. And it's all this some um, kind of thing, you know. And this is what this lady, this lady didn't hardly knew about the Lisbon Treaty because she was too busy working. And that's just typical. That's just typical. That's what they do all the time. Now, oh. here's my program. Here's my program. There you see. Uh, there's been some good speakers so far on Saturday. That's my lot. That's my little raffle ticket, which I didn't win anything this time. I, I won the first time I came here, incidentally. And there's Kathy Rowan Druitt, who's a um, She's an astrologer. She, she's a bit like Helen Sewell, who um, I'm sure you'll remember I saw at the AV2 conference a few months ago. And this lady was a bit more easy to understand than Helen Sewell. And she, had a, she had a different spin on things as far as she was doing a 2012 astrology thing, talking about um, all sorts of things like how, um, how the various uh, planets are going to affect the world in 2012. You know, I was Richard D. Hall. Now I think he was the best speaker of the morning. He was a um, he's part of the UK disclosure movement, and he's lobbying Parliament. And he he he's been sort of like asking David Cameron questions and things like that. Because of course David Cameron's going to be the new Prime Minister. Um, about about UFOs, about what the government knows about UFOs. Now Mark Bennett, he he's with the Ethereum Society and. He's the second Ethereum Society speaker we've had because um, beforehand we had um, Richard Lawrence a few years ago. Now, if you remember what, if you read my report at that that conference, I wasn't overly impressed. I'm, um, you know, this kind of um, these sort of UFO religions, like the Ray. I mean, the Ethereum Society are not as phony as the Raelians, I must say, but it's all it all comes a bit like a cargo cult kind of thing you know like when these south sea islanders they they turn modern technology into a religion when they first encountered it i think we're turning ufos into a religion because they're more advanced than we are we shouldn't we shouldn't be that you know they may be more advanced in terms of technology and science they may also be more spiritually enlightened but this does not make them gods any you know it's like this thing in india where they make people gods if a, a guy becomes a god if he sits on top of a mountain for 20 years eating nothing but dry rice i I didn't gel with that at all. Um, Dolores Cannon is she's probably the most famous speaker. She's um, I've read her books and you've probably heard of her because she's her books are very very famous. She's a she's like a hypnotic regressionist. She doesn't have psychic experiences herself, but she hypnotizes other people and they have these experiences. You know, almost anyone, and that's what makes her very interesting. Almost anyone she gets on you know underneath the old dangling watch. Um, comes out with these most amazing things, encounters with aliens, but not just encounters with aliens, even being aliens. Isn't that remarkable? Because people have past lives as being aliens, and being other things, you know, even being robots and things like that. And it's really remarkable. I mean, she writes a book about five feet thick every year, and she's, she's in her 80s, this lady. And she's, after she's done this conference, she's off to Russia. You know, I mean, blimey. I mean, what a lady, what, what, amazing, um, what amazing energy she has. Anyway, that's day one of Probe. It's now Sunday. We're going to go, me and Bardo are going down for our breakfast in a minute. And then it's for day two. And, um, of course, there'll be plenty of uh, Panwo TV material for that as well. So, stay tuned. Hospital Ports Pride and Dignity. Stop the New World Order.